I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome everybody to the Ernest Angley Hour. We have a great program for you. The message by Reverend Steve today, Do You Pray the Right Way? This is part one in a series. Yes, friend, there's a right way to pray and a wrong way. And you find out how to pray in the Word of God. Listen to this message. It can bless your spiritual walk with the Lord. But first, we have some good music and singing. Oh, 
your blood just for me. Lord, I love you for taking my place on that tree. Lord, I love you. Without you, Lord, where would I be? Where would I be? Lord, I love you for going to Calvary. A trail of blood led the way up a hill to Golgotha that day. A crowd had gathered to see while Jesus suffered in agony. But the sun refused to shine while the Father had to turn from the sight. Lord, I love you for going to Calvary. Your blood just for me, Lord, I love you for taking my place on that tree. And to pray, Jesus cried, let this cup pass from me. But he quickly resigned, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thine. Drops of blood fell from him while he bore all our sickness and sin. Lord, I love you for going to Calvary. Lord, I love you for shedding your blood just for me. Lord, I love my message is, are you praying the right way? Prayer is an important part of a Christian's relationship with God. When you pray the right way, you will share with God your most intimate thoughts and emotions, and you will trust Him with your whole heart. God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins and to bring a connection to him through Jesus. Jesus is in heaven with God, and he is ready to make intercessions for you. But do you believe that Jesus will intercede for you? We have all of heaven backing us up in this final hour. 
Angels are on standby to do battle for us. But are we confident that the Lord is going to back us up? Well, this is what the Word of God tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? If God is willing to give us his beloved son so that we can have eternal life, then why would we think that God wouldn't help us in our time of need? If God is for us, who can be against us? Do you believe that God is for you? If you don't, then you won't pray the right way and you won't expect God to move for you in your time of need. To pray the right way is to come before God with confidence in His love and grace and know that He hears your prayers. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Do you have confidence to hear that God hears your prayers? Are your petitions in line with God's divine will? Or are they in line with your own will? King Hezekiah was one of the good kings, and he followed God. The Bible says that he trusted in the God of Israel, and he departed not from following him, but kept his commandments. That is why God prospered King Hezekiah. But there was a powerful enemy, Sennacherib, that was threatening to destroy King Hezekiah and his kingdom. And Sennacherib sent a threatening letter to Hezekiah, bullying him, trying to bully him into submission. But Hezekiah didn't hide in fear. Instead, he took the letter and presented it before God in prayer. In 2 Kings, it tells us in chapter 19, verses 14 through 19, And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers, and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord, and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord, and said, O Lord, God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, that thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God of a truth, Lord. The kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Let's examine Hezekiah's prayer. First, he honors God by claiming he is the true God of all the kingdoms and that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Next, he humbly asks God to hear his prayer. He doesn't demand the Lord to hear his prayer. 
He humbly asked the Lord. You have to look at it this way. King Hezekiah is used to commanding people around, but he humbly comes before the Lord, and he lays out the truth of his situation before the God, trusting that God is hearing his prayer. And he sees, God sees what is written in this letter. Finally, he asked the Lord for deliverance, not just for his sake, but for the world to know that he serves a great and mighty God. Well, we know that God heard King Hezekiah's prayer because the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. King Hezekiah's prayer wasn't a lengthy, drawn out prayer. In fact, it was only 134 words long. It only took about a minute or so to speak. We don't need to say a lot of words when we come before the Lord in prayer. We just need to honor, show honor to God and speak the truth and make our petition in faith, expecting God to move for us. King Hezekiah did just that. And the end result was that an angel, one angel, killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. One angel can do that for King Hezekiah. Just think what one angel can do for all of us. We aren't looking for God to kill our enemies. We are looking for the Lord to save our enemies and make them vessels that can be used for his honor and glory. One drop of the blood of Jesus can set the captives free from the bondage of sin. It's through the blood that we will have victory over the real enemy, the devil. People aren't our enemy. No, it's the devil and his demons. And that the devil has souls in his bondage. But like I said, that one drop of blood can set those captives free. We are fighting a spiritual warfare and the fight is for lost souls. Child of God, are you praying for the lost? Are you sending up your petitions daily to God to help us rescue lost souls from the clutches of the devil? I think it's safe to say that most of us found Jesus because someone prayed for us when we were sinners. Down through the years, this Jesus ministry has sent up prayers for those who have no one to pray for them. And maybe that someone was you. How much more should we all be mindful and pray for the lost? Do you pray the right way? In Matthew's gospel, the sixth chapter, it lets us know that there is a wrong way to pray. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and, they, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. The hypocrite will pray so men can see them. His prayers were, are not sincere, and they're not from the heart. The right way to pray is to get alone with the Lord and open your heart and your mind to Him. 
Think of it this way. When you're trying to have a personal, private conversation with someone, you don't do it out in the open. No, do you go to somewhere that is private. When you pray the right way, you will seek to have a private and intimate conversation with the Lord. We don't have to prove to others that we have a relationship with God by praying out loud in the public. When we pray, our intentions need to be pure. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, I read, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the, heathens, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. We are God's children. He wants us to talk to him like we are talking to our earthly father. God knows what our needs are, and he wants to supply all our needs. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 lets us know, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory, my Christ Jesus. We can't bankrupt God's bank of blessings. Friend, I hope you are enjoying this message by Reverend Steve Millar. Stay tuned, more is coming up later. But at this time, I wanna take the opportunity to encourage you to stand by this Jesus ministry. Help us win souls for Jesus all over the world. We're doing so now in a variety of ways, world radio, television, through the internet, online streaming of our services, different social media platforms we are using, as well as our Growing in Grace mission program. Win the lost at any cost. That's been the motto of this Jesus ministry for decades, and it continues. Souls keep coming into the kingdom. And as you stand by this Jesus ministry with your tithes and your love offerings, God will bless you. It's been proven again and again in so many people's lives. God will reward you spiritually, physically, and financially, as well as in heaven in the life to come. You can donate through our website at earnestangely.org, or you can simply mail in your support. For those of you in Canada, we have a mailing address in particular for you, so write to that Canadian address. And when you stand by this Jesus ministry as a partner, month by month, you get a new letter from the ministry to encourage you. In the June letter, it marks and celebrates our 67th year of this Jesus ministry in the Akron, Ohio area. Many years ago, Reverend Angley and his late wife, Angel, they established this Jesus ministry in a tent. And now today that tent is expanding and growing and covering different parts of the world. And it's wonderful. Friend, stand by, donate, help us celebrate our 67th anniversary year. You can do so by donating a dollar for each year, which is $67. You can also donate and give $2 for each year, which would be, would be $134 or you could give $3 for each year, and that would be $201. Give, friend, help us celebrate. Many souls have been won, and many souls will continue to be won. And remember, when you support each month, you also receive a new giant little book of the month. These are sermons by Reverend Angley in booklet form, spiritual food for your soul. And this month, on the anniversary, we will give you two classic sermons by Reverend Angley in booklet form. You will conquer fear or fear will conquer you, as well as fear, fear, stifling fear. People battle with fear, they struggle with it. Here's the remedy in these two booklets. So when you send in your support for June, be sure to request gift offer K0072. Well, friend, we have more music and singing coming up right now. It's the Hallelujahs When a Soul Cries.
When you think about it, friend, nothing really matters. Only the love for Jesus and the souls for us together. So help us with our burden.
When the trumpet sounds and Jesus arrives, the Spirit will lead and judgment is nigh before it's too late. Friend, kneel down and pray. Ask Him to forgive you with godly sorrow today. divinity give your whole life to him and let his blood set you free the world is so bound with darkness and sin a reprobate mind has been given to men Given over to lust, their evil thoughts are a sign That we don't have long, we're on borrowed time But you can get ready and be delivered, my friend The ark door is open for those who enter in Don't wait too long before the door God for forgiveness so you can go up before it's too late. Friend, kneel down and pray. Ask Him to forgive you with godly sorrow today. Believing in set you free If you yielded your heart to salvation's call Start praising the Lord and give Jesus your all Give, give Jesus the glory It's a wonderful praise That holy word glory will begin Change. Keep lifting those praises in honor of Him Until the Holy Ghost speaks and He enters in As the glories go up, He'll take over your tongue It's no longer you, the Spirit has come before it's too His Spirit come in. Pilate said, he's an innocent man. Then the crowd cried out, crucify him. But the story does not end there He carried that old rugged cross up the hill Then between Part of the story, the best part of 
the story has not happened yet. Despised and rejected, beaten and mocked, our Savior He died on that cruel, rugged cross. Joseph's tomb in the cold and dark his body lay but in three days in three days yes in three days Jesus rose conquering death hell and the grave despised and rejected for the cross of Jesus Christ and the power of deliverance that flows from it. It's a wonderful song by the Cathedral Trio. Now taking you back to Grace Cathedral for more of the sermon by Reverend Steve Millar. King Hezekiah's prayer was not a long prayer. And our prayers don't need to be long either. They just need to be straight from the heart and send them all the way up to heaven. A heathen is a person that does not acknowledge the true and living God of the Bible. And 
there's a great comparison of the effectiveness of prayers of the heathen compared to the effectiveness of the prayers of a child of God. And it's found in 1 Kings chapter 18. There was a great famine in the land of Israel during this time that Ahab was king. And he was a wicked king. And he worshiped Baal, a false god. Elijah met with King Ahab and told him and all the people and the 400 prophets of the grove, and he had the 450 prophets of Baal build an altar to their God, and Elijah was going to build an altar to his God, and whoever answered by fire was a true and living God. The prophets of Baal started praying to their God, Baal, in the morning all the way into the evening but there was no results. They got desperate for their prayers to be heard, so they started cutting themselves. When it came time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah built his altar. He dug a trench around the altar and had 12 barrels of water dumped into the, over the sacrifice, filling up the trench around the altar. Then he said a simple 63-word prayer to God that took probably a little over 30 seconds to speak. And the fire came down and consumed the sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up all the water. And the prophets of Baal, they spent hours praying to their God in vain with no results because they didn't pray the right way. They didn't pray the right way because they were praying to a false god. When you pray, who are you praying to? Are you praying to God or are you just simply just saying words and not even mean it? Elijah knew he was praying to the only true and living God. And he knew that God was listening to his prayers. He didn't even have to make a big show of it. He didn't have to cut himself to get God's intention. When you pray the right way, God will be listening. And you will speak your prayers with love and reverence and holy boldness. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, I read, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Think about the situation Elijah was in. He had all of Israel watching him. And he prayed to God. He had his whole entire reputation on the line. But the thing is, Elijah didn't have confidence in himself. He had confidence in God. King Hezekiah's prayer was about a minute. And God answered it by sending one angel to kill 185,000 Assyrian. Elijah's prayer was about 30 seconds in length. And God rained down fire from heaven to prove that he is the true and living God. These two examples lets us know that we can simply dart a prayer and God will hear us if we pray in the right way. We can dart a prayer in our mind anytime, anywhere. We don't always have to be down on our knees. Paul wrote in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray without ceasing. To cease means to stop, discontinue, come to an end. So Paul is trying to say that we should never stop praying, that our minds need to be connected with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Throughout the day and night, you can talk to the Lord in your mind. It doesn't have to just be when you're doing your prayer time. Jesus tells a parable. 
how we need to pray and not faint. And this is in the 18th chapter of Luke's Gospel. Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. And he, meaning Jesus, spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, man, Yet, because this widow woman, this widow, troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? God is ready to do battle for us, just like he was ready to do battle for King Hezekiah. But do you believe? Do you pray with the faith to believe that God hears your prayers and that will avenge your adversaries? God is not an unjust judge. We do not need to be persistent asking over and over again the same thing like this woman. The woman needed a judge to listen and to avenge her adversary. But remember, God knows what we need before we even ask. The devil is our adversary working through people, trying to get us to fail. But if we keep our hearts and mind connected with heaven, we will have, God will have an ear to listen to our prayer. That is why it's important to pray without ceasing. Reverend Angeli has taught us down through the ears that prayer is 99% praise unto the Lord. I'm going to have to continue this message because there's so much more that we need to know about prayer. There's so many in the world today that are not praying the right way, and they are hindering God by what they're doing. I want to encourage, encourage everyone this week to focus on praying without ceasing. I want you to praise the Lord and Thank Him in your mind throughout the day. If the Holy Spirit brings someone to your mind, cover them in prayer. You may not know what they're going through, but God does. Ask the Lord to bless them, to move for them spiritually, physically, and financially. By keeping your mind in the flow of prayer throughout the day, you will notice that you will have less and less mind battles. Remember Elijah and King Hezekiah prayed short prayers. And God moved mightily for them because they were connected with heaven. How many of your prayers will you dart this week, staying in contact with God and heaven who knows how many they will answer. But God will answer each prayer if you're 100% connected with Him, if it's with His will. We always need to pray in God's divine will. Sinner backslider, God wants you to hear, wants to hear your prayer of the prayer of repentance by asking Jesus Christ into your heart. He wants you to confess your sins and accept Jesus. If you are truly sorry for your sins that you have committed, you will want Jesus to forgive you. The Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. 
the blood of Jesus will instantly change you and make you a brand new creature in Christ. Friend, let's pray this prayer right now and accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have the healer. Let's get your miracle for you right now. It doesn't matter what sickness or disease is in your body. We're going to pray the right prayer and expect God to move in a special way for you to break your bondage. It doesn't matter even if you have COVID right now. We're going to be praying for all of you. It doesn't matter what sickness is in your body. So at this time, those of you that are listening, put your hand on your listening device. And those of you that are watching, put your hand on the screen right now against mine. This is a point of contact. And let's just pull down heaven together. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what they need. Break their bondage and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let everything come to normal. Give them the strength that they need, Lord, and do bless them and keep them and wrap your loving arms around them. Let them feel their, your holy presence come upon them. In the blood name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. And write to us and let us know how you're doing. You can contact us through social media. And it's a blessing to hear from you and hear your testimony, what God has done for you. Now at this time, now that you have Jesus in your heart and your blood washed, it's time to become spirit-filled. And all of you, I'd like you to stand up at this time. And those of you that do not have the Holy Ghost living and dwelling on the inside of you, you can go to my left, your right, and we'll have workers over there helping you, expecting God to move in a great way and the Holy Spirit to baptize you. All you have to do is say glory. And as you're saying one glory right after another, the Holy Spirit will come on in and take over your tongue in a heavenly language, change those glories into a heavenly language. So all you have to do is just start saying glory. You're right at home, praising God, saying glory, one glory after another, just expecting the Holy Spirit to come in. Be that yielded vessel. Let him bless you tonight. Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon them. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And just praise them, friend. Just start praising them with your whole heart, glorifying the King, praising Jesus, loving Jesus, lifting up those praises. You and Jesus, you and Jesus. And all of you out there who prayed with Reverend Steve today, I will be agreeing with you, believing God to meet your need. And do let us know about it. We'd love to hear the praise report. But at this time, friend, I want to personally invite you to our camp meeting weekend over July 4th. What a time in the Lord it will be. Four great services that we will have. Friday night, 7 p.m., good music and singing, a special sermon. And those of you who are in need of prayer, come and expect God to move for you. Saturday evening, we have a service at 7 p.m. This service will not be televised. It will not be streamed live. No, it's just performance after performance, good music and singing throughout the night, and you will be blessed. Then Sunday morning, at 10 a.m., another special sermon with more good music and singing. And then Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we have something very special for you. I know you will enjoy it. Be with us all weekend long. And remember, the Friday and Sunday services will be live streamed. So if you're unable to be with us, join us 
through the live stream. And I want to encourage you, friend, also check out all of our social media pages. We're adding new content all of the time. You can follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries. And when you subscribe, hit the notification button. That will notify you when the live stream starts and it will also notify you of new content. And friend, if this Jesus ministry has been a blessing to you, if you enjoy this show, if you received a miracle or a healing, we'd love to hear about it. Send your testimony by email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. Well, I trust this show today has been a great blessing to you. We look forward to seeing you next week. And always remember, you are special to God and to me. Do you have a desire to learn more about God's Word? Maybe you're a preacher, youth leader, or just a student of God's Word. Let me encourage you to sign up for our free online Bible college courses. These courses are organized with the latest software and are based on the King James Version Bible, plus the many books written by Reverend Ernest Angley. The courses are self-paced and learning friendly. You are provided with detailed feedback on your progress. Some students elect to seek certificates, which are awarded to those passing certain courses. These online courses can be taken at your location and at your pace. See ErnestAngley.org for details and sign up. Remember 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth.